It's better than the five hundred dollars you're gonna spend. Writing, they're saying acting. Hey, Sam, you're gonna play Hi, and welcome back to The Casting Couch. I'm your host, Todd Stroik. And I'm your host, Katie Seeley. Today's guest is Scott Kim. He is has been in casting for about two years. He started as an intern and worked his way up to assistant and then associate with Valerie McCaffrey Casting. He has since branched out and is now casting his own projects. Thank you for coming on our show, yeah. Scott. Hey. Hey. Great to be here. Great to be yeah. here. Thanks so much for joining us on the couch today. Absolutely. Can you explain to our audience the big difference between an assistant and associate casting? Yeah, actually, um, just a casting assistant is basically you're another assistant. You're rolling calls. You know, you're making appointments. Uh, when you reach casting associate level, then you're kind of casting maybe some of the small roles that the casting director does not have time for. You're kind of taking your own meetings. You're setting up your own workshops and so forth. Uh, you basically have been in long enough that the casting director trusts you to make sound judgment on actors and actresses coming in to be in projects that we're working on. So people. for these indie films that you cast, when yeah. you release a breakdown, uh, how many submissions do you get per role on average? Uh, it depends. Usually the younger characters, so like early 20s male, early 20 females, I'll get like thousands. <laughs> That's yeah, us. I'm totally okay, so early 20s. Like thousands. <laughs> thousands. thousands. Great. Oh, um, great. The older you get <laughs> in both male and female, is like there's less um, oh. Less competition. Less. Yeah, less All right, competition. so we just have to hang in there. Till you know, your 40s, 20s, 50s, 60s. Well, I'm going to be in my 20s forever, yeah. so I, I don't know about you. Yeah. Forever young, you know. Right, right. <laughs> right. Well, okay, but why Why is that? Well, I mean, most of the people that come out are early 20s. You know, you're looking for that. Yeah, 18, at very minimum, trying to break into Hollywood. So of those uh, thousands of submissions, what makes you bring somebody in? Is it a relationship you already have? What if it's uh, a... Somebody you don't know that, what in it? I mean, the, the thumbnail pictures are like this yeah. big online. Well, as a as a casting associate, you are the one that has to like go through each one, and kind of give your boss a rundown. Sometimes I'm like, hey, this guy's good, this you girl's go good. Every single one. Yeah. So wow. however many. Do you ever do direct booking? Like, uh, like yeah. Somebody, yeah. Like, say they didn't so it's someone you've known from the past. You've either brought them in or maybe you've seen them at a mm -hmm. workshop. Yeah. You'll just direct book. Yeah. Well, especially if that's awesome. Especially it's actually the, happened to me. Yeah. Especially if the producer and the director have worked with them before. Like, hey, remember when we did this a while back? Remember that girl? Yeah, mm -hmm. boom, let's bring her in. Yeah, Great. Like, yeah, okay. I don't, we don't need to. You know, I, I've worked with her before. We'll just book her on the spot. So we'll just call up and be like, hey, listen, got a project. Agents and managers love that, obviously. Right. So yeah. just like, hey, I'm sending you, you with the paperwork. Work for We're them. Just, yeah. yeah. Booking her on the spot. Yeah. So you, you've got like a group of your favorites, obviously. That yeah. You've worked Everybody with. has. How do we become one of your favorites? <laughs> yes. Workshops. How do they? Right. You are you are already my favorites. Oh, but, oh um, yeah. Hey. High five. You, you've climbed the, the ranks. Couch. Climbed oh, the ranks. So exciting. Um, <laughs> that's key for anything in this business. I feel, I'm talking to you guys, that... The number one thing to uh, making it here is just being out here, persevering. Because it's like people, what is it? They say it's statistically four, uh, four to seven years. That's the average lifespan of somebody out here. And then that's it. They're gone. But if you stick around, everybody has a list. And then the more people that leave, the higher up you go. And the better you are at your craft, the higher up you go. So casting directors will call you up, maybe even personally. Be like, hey, listen. I'm going to tell your agent later, but we got this thing coming up. I want you to come in. Yeah. Great. Great. Right. So just stick around. Good advice. Okay, so question. My agent, um, I want him to pitch me to you. Yeah. What should I tell him to pitch? Like, how, how should he be selling me to you? He or she should know you pretty well, like right. your skill sets and so forth. So they should have a pitch. You can ask them. Be like, hey, listen, when you pitch people... How do you do it? How do yeah. how do you sound? You know, I've That's never asked my I've agent that. Asked mine I mean, you know, don't do it during pilot <laughs> season when they're busy and they're swamped. But like, uh, but right now, during yeah, the right before, right before anything kind of kicks in, you can be like, when when you pitch me, just out of curiosity, it's like, uh, how do you do it? You know, what do you refer me as? Is and there so forth. anything an actor can do to? Help with help. that pitch. Yeah. Um, what about an actor wanting to pitch themselves? Will you take that call? Yeah, no, that's the worst idea in the world. Oh, <laughs> oh. because okay. I won't do it ever, yeah. ever again. Whoops. Shoot, no uh, wonder I didn't get booked on all those projects. <laughs> Explains it, a lot. I mean, casting directors only want to hear from the agents and managers that they've worked with and they know of mm -hmm. or are legitimate. So, like actors call, it sound it's too desperate, and they don't have time for that. You know, mm. 
So the assistants are swamped getting calls from the agents themselves. Why, why are they going to listen to you guys come in? On that note, what about self-tapes? When actors submit a self-tape, uh, whether you asked for it or not. Oh. Have so you... unsolicited self-tapes. Unsolicited yeah. self-tapes. Basically, uh, they didn't ask for it. No, I mean, most casting directors won't look at it. They so won't. The assistants will, maybe, and they'll be like, hey, boss, check it out. I think this guy's good. But, like, if we're, if they're swamped casting something and you just randomly submit, not through an agent or whatever, then it's, it, again, it's the same desperation. Mm-hmm. It's And it feels amateurish. Because mm-hmm. if you are a professional, you are represented. And if you're represented, they will send you what, uh, however, whatever it feels what like. What if the self-tape is sent from the agent? Yeah, well, then that's fine. Then um, you would look at it? Yeah. But uh, the problem with self-tapes, I feel, um, and a lot of other, I feel a lot of casting directors will feel, obviously, if you're out of state, but you can, you know, go to shoot there, then self-tape and so forth. But when you're in the room, you can make adjustments. So if you mm-hmm. do something wrong, and be like, hey, you don't try it as if, you know, your cat died or something. You can't do that with a self-tape. So I have a question. So say an actor comes in and kills it in the room, and you bring them back for a producer session. Yeah. What are your expectations of the actor at that I point? expect them to do better than when they saw me, because uh, my perception might have been a little skewed, because I may have run through a ton of crappy people, and then I'll get to this guy, and he's great. But it he may be more so because I went through just a bunch of crappy people, so I want him to mm. do better. Mm. That way when producers and directors are there, I can tell them, this is the guy that you want because he did great. Mm. And if you don't perform, then it looks bad on me. Right. You know? Yeah, like, I guess it is so a direct reflection. Right, so you want them to do better, but should they do the scene the same way that they did it for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're in a producer-director sessions, they're going to have you do it a couple times. It's not going to be a one-go type thing. Okay. okay, what exactly does a producer session entail? Uh, it basically means you're that much closer to getting the part. And then the second part is that you're going to be more in-depth. So the producers may even ask some questions. Oftentimes, as an actor, I'm directed to come in, uh, like if I get the producer call back, yeah. to do it the same way I did in the pre-read. But then you're saying be even better. So are you saying no, do it I mean, the same way as the pre-read, but just more energy? And then... No, I mean, uh, do it exactly. If the casting director is telling you do it exactly like you did it in the pre-read, then you do it exactly like you did it in the pre-read. Like, they don't really give you um, directions like that unless it's... Unless they mean it. You know, okay. Right. All right. Like, Good. Noted. <laughs> All right. Now I want to talk to you about your experience working with both union and non-union projects okay. and the differences between those. Um, can you kind of explain what your experience has been like? Non-union, obviously, if you're non-union, you're not as experienced. Some people hold off and become SAG E mm-hmm. just so that they can work on non-union stuff and upgrade their reel. Right. And, okay. Now, so SAG-E, of, oh, ahead, I just yeah. want to say SAG E means SAG eligible. Right. So they're right on the cusp. They haven't joined yeah. the union yet, so they can. The, yeah. They're in a really sweet spot. They can do non-union and accept union work. Yeah. However, when you're SAG E and you accept a union, then job, you have then to become have to SAG. Yeah. But right. hopefully, that job will have paid for yeah. your. Uh, initiation Highly to the doubtful, union. but it is possible. <laughs> right? Commercial or something, that'd be great. Right. right. But okay, so does it make your job easier working with SAG actors or is it more difficult paperwork wise? Depending on the project. If I'm working on a non union thing, obviously I'm going to prefer non union actors. Or yeah. if you're FICOR. Or if you're FICOR. Right. Uh, the advantages of FICOR is you are technically union because according to you know state laws, the unions can't forbid you from working. Right. So FICOR is an option where you still have the status of protection of union, right. uh, but you can work on non-union stuff. So it doesn't really affect your decision yeah. whether if you're if FICOR actor. or SAG or non-union. It doesn't matter to you. You'll hire the person if they're right for the part. Yeah. Well, it, uh, if they're right for the part and it's the project. So if it's a if it's a short film, webisode, whatever. But if you're union, if it's a higher level production, obviously I can't hit any of the non-union stuff. Only, you know... Well, there is that thing called Taft Hartley. Right? Yeah, if you're that good that the casting director and the producers and everybody loves you, like obviously whatever. You know, could most you, of the times, like I was doing that Taft Hartley stuff as an assistant. Could you just explain to our viewers what that is if they don't know? Yeah, all right. Taft Hartley is basically you're, you're kind of like backdoored into the union. So you get on a, a union project. So let's say you're on CSI Miami as like the guest star. And you're non-union. They'll tap, great. yeah. They'll tap partly you. They'll kind of backdoor you into the union. Um, you know, the wages and all that stuff could be taken care of by either the company or right. like taken out of your paycheck. 
So if any of our viewers wants to keep up with you or contact you, where can they go? Do you have a website or Twitter? Yeah. Or? Um, you can go on IMDb and then just type in Scott Kim, um, that third one, but you'll find a very handsome picture of me. Well, nice. It'll say, um, nice. It'll say like, casting director yeah, next to yeah. you. And, and then uh, people... my email address is on there. You can contact me that way. Oh, so people just send you an email and be like, hey, yeah. here's my headshot and resume. So yeah, I've got a question yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Super. Just not an unsolicited self-tape. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of those. <laughs> you can email. <laughs> right. All right. Well, thanks so much All for right, coming no on the show. Thank, thank you, you, Scott. All right. And thank you for tuning in to The Casting Couch this week. I'm Todd Stroik. You can find me at Todd Stroik on Twitter, on Facebook. Like our Facebook page, The Casting Couch. I'm Katie Seely. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore Katie Seely because somebody else already had it. Oh, that's <laughs> tough. And subscribe to our page on this button below if you're, if you're on, on YouTube. YouTube. Mm. Yeah, because we've got All lots right. more great advice for actors. All right. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time on The Casting Couch. <laughs>